Welcome, welcome, welcome back everyone again to another episode of the Nudge Ready Talk podcast. Uh, I hope you all have been doing well since the last time we were able to sit down and give a listen. I know these times have, in some countries, got more difficult. In Barbados, that has been the case, unfortunately. But I hope wherever you are, you're doing much better and your community and island is doing much better. Now, the topic of today's episode was supposed to be on the minimum wage versus the living wage. A very good topic. But I'm going to have to push that back to next two weeks when I release a new episode because of a, a recent topic or stir that occurred locally. And I thought it would be very good to at least give my point of view on it, my perspective on it. So as you can probably infer by the title, the topic is about racism, specifically that focus towards members of the African diaspora. Because racism can go up, down, left, right. It's not partial. So quite recently, there was a video where this local businessman, Caucasian man, was being recorded, unbeknownst to him, unbeknownst to him. Um, He was obviously in anger, a fit of rage. And in his anger, he he viewed um, his disdain for niggers and was wondering why they were brought to our shores from Africa. No, I don't. I can understand the um, mindset of um, the disdain for the niggers, but I can understand the lack of education when it comes to history. When he was wondering why they were brought to our shores, I think think he may have some uh, historical accounts of that there somewhere in his home or in the whole country. Nonetheless, these burning questions were on this man's mind. So before I go any further in breaking down this, and the events that happened after, because there's more, I'm going to be very clear. This is the behavior of a racist, and he is a racist, period. This immoral mindset should not be tolerated, and I would recommend anyone to boycott Clifford Corbyn's landscaping and excavating business. Take a whip to his bank account. Now, as I was watching the video, and even after I watched the video, I did not feel any It wasn't a surprising thing to happen because um, a lot of us get confused and think, oh, racism only happens over there in America, only happens over there in Europe. No, racism happens anywhere you have ignorant people. Anywhere you have ignorant people who are of a different pigment, you can get some racism coming in. So it wasn't anything that blew my socks off. And he was expressing himself, so it was just like, okay. So my takeaway from it was, this is an idiot, remember his face, steer clear of him if I ever see him. And that's all it was for me, and I was jogging on. However, I realized that some members of the wider community didn't think like me, as is the case in any community or country, and they were requesting an apology from Mr. Corbyn. This, of course, being the age of social justice, social media, and social influence, Mr. Corbyn, I guess came to a realization that he should probably do an apology. And he wrote a letter. I'm just going to call it a letter. It was, um, it was um, reported in the newspapers as an apology. It wasn't no damn apology to me. It was a letter of superiority with the sprinkles of the word apology in it to quell the social unrest. Now, some of you must be like, yo, dog, you sure you're not just biased about the video and it's and misjudges impact on you? And, uh, it could be, it could be, but I don't think so. And if you listen, I'll, I'll explain why I don't think that is how it is. So in the apology done by the Mr. Corbyn, there were some major takeaways. But first, let me get to what an apology bloody well is, or I assume what an apology should be for most people. Firstly, it should be an admission that you did something wrong to someone, you hurt someone or something like that, then you should probably, you know, express some form of regret for what you did after you realize that is wrong. And lastly, you could ask for, you know, if they would accept it or forgiveness, but that that last part isn't really up to you. So once you fulfill the two or the three, you bougie, you bougie. However, this man, when he was writing this letter, started off, but, you know, acknowledging the people of Barbados, all the races and ethnicities. Then my man just went into the fact that he's been a victim of two crimes. First one being the fact that he was recorded during his um, racist rant. 
The second one being that he found out that some property that he had, some vehicles, were vandalized. And this anger, it culminated, this anger of being vandalized. It made him so angry that he referred to these individuals that he saw, because it was videotaped, as niggers. But not the general public. He made that very clear. It was not the general public of African descent that was niggers. Then he explained his mindset again about, you know, he was angry. And because of this angry, he said some things that he shouldn't have said. So let me apologize to all races and ethnicities in Barbados and beyond. Following that, he did the, you know, the textbook. I'm not a racist. I have friends and employees and whatever else you can have who are of the African descent and even East Indian descent. And then he ended it off with, but again, this vandalizing problem must be stopped. There's some things I can agree with in there. But firstly, this isn't a Apology, Mr. Corbin. I, do, I don't know where in your brain space this registered as an apology. This is clearly a justification for your racist comments expressed in the video. Your racist comments expressed in the video. You needed, to, you needed to validate that what you did wasn't truly wrong. It wasn't truly wrong. It was, you, you could follow the, the line as to how you got to this racist rant. How you got to the five saying niggers and wondering this. It was, this was a justification that you were trying to spin to the rest of the society and there's no justification for it so no i ain't even tell you come again because i don't believe you have the capacity to do an apology for something like this so just jog on i mean you weren't in, in it he even said that he's man enough to recognize that what he did was wrong and he's man enough also to apologize you didn't apologize so i don't know how you got the fact that you're man enough you couldn't even direct your apology to the group of people your tirade was about i don't i don't know what you're doing no, as for these vandals who destroyed your property, they should be found and charged and the courts take its action. Two teenage delinquents. That's what they are. They're two teenage delinquents who committed an act of vandalization. And as such, we have a word for how we refer to them and we call them vandals, not niggers. So let, let's be clear. When you, when you utter the words nigger, that, that wasn't... So, let, so let's be clear. They're vandals. The anger that you express towards these vandals, they are vandals not niggers your anger just allowed for in my opinion your most visceral self to be shown that of a racist now i've been angry many times many more than you know probably is needed it happens but in my anger and the focus of my anger i've never felt the need to or have actually referred to anyone by a racial slur i've called them what i think they are which which you may have done I've called them idiots, I've called them cunts, I've called them vandals, criminals, etc. But never has a racial slur come out of my mind to describe um, someone or something in a fit of anger. I guess it just isn't in me. But who knows? Who really does know? No, to all of you, because I've seen a lot of people starting to defend this, this individual. Um, I really don't know what to say to you people. I've seen some people saying, um, what if all of the um, Caucasian businessmen and women leave the country of Barbados, then, then how will the country survive? To that, I merely ask, is your self-image and worth so low that you believe you need an overseer to develop, to push your country forward? You, you really believe you need people with a colonial mindset Braces to be like, this is how we need to drive forward. Can't, can't you make that decision for yourself? Have your ancestors not taught you anything, my guy? Are, are, are free education ain't working? How can you? There are local businessmen and women who are of very different ethnicities. There's some who are of the Afro descent, it's Indian. To, to be of the mindset that because one gone, the whole country can turn into a shitter is the same reason that, you know, after slavery was abolished and had this bullshit thing about. We need to take some time to let you readjust to being a free person. No. No. And even if stuff was to go down, the drain slightly, if all of them left, I'd have confidence in my people and the country to bounce back. So reevaluate that. So all I can say, because I don't want this to be too long, this isn't something that needs a lot of deliberation. There's no reason, no justification and there should be no toleration of a racist and a racist ethos in this country, on this planet, anywhere, period. But I know some of you 
we'll have your views and perspective. And for that, I will ask you to know I'm very interested in, in these different mindsets. So I'd like for you guys to comment in the comment section below and let's have a dialogue respectfully, of course. Uh, in the description box, I will have the link to the apology that was written in the article. Um, if the video is still up, I'll have that video linked in the description box below as well. Um, but I don't want this episode to be long. Thank you again for listening and joining and I hope you have a great and safe day. Once again, this has been another episode of the Nudge Talk Podcast.